All right, guys, happy Wednesday. We got script training today, October 26th. Time for us to practice our scripts, sharpen our skills. Um, I want to get a survey from you guys and we'll dive right in. What's a common objection you are running into right now besides the, hey, I want to hold off or the rates are too high? I know that's a, that's a big one. We've gone over that a bunch of times. Um, if you haven't studied that one, there's plenty of uh, recordings from that one. But what are some of the other objections you're running into when you're talking to people, maybe who are not wanting to meet for an appointment or not wanting to move forward? Uh, are there any other objections that you're running into when talking to people? Uh, please type them in the chat. Job uncertainty. I'm an agent, a realtor, so I know what this is. What else you guys got? Busy right now. Can you call me back? Still the rates. California's too expensive. Moving out of state. I'm an all cash buyer. I want to wait two months to see the prices go even lower since the rates are going up next month. Hanging up before rebuttal. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Anything people are actually saying to you and that's stopping you? I like the one of someone wanting to wait uh, waiting for my significant other, going through a personal issue, like going through a divorce. Okay. Cool. Some good ones here. Um, I'm going to go down the line and, and start going through some of these. I'm an agent, a realtor, so I know what this is. Yeah. If they're an agent, if they're a realtor, then there's nothing we can do. I would just move on, quickly move on, go to something else. Um unless they're an out of state agent or someone and they want to work with the local agent and, and work a referral or work a deal. Um, Mauricio and Rob just picked up three listings from that, an out of area agent who had a client, family client here in our area that needed to list three properties. And they partnered up with uh, Mauricio and Rob, that agent's getting a referral fee and they picked up three listings from that. So anytime you have an outside agent, uh, I would definitely see if there's an opportunity to partner, right? So, hey, totally understand you're an agent. Uh, are you interested in a partnership, right? Maybe partnering with a local agent or a local expert or someone who has more resources. That's kind of a shot in the dark, but hey, you never know. There could be an opportunity there. So that's what I would, I would do. Um, one of the ones that I want to work on here that I see is... When someone's thinking the price is going to go lower, like I think the prices are going to go lower. Um, so I want to wait, right? Because we've had like, we've had the one where it's like, hey, the rates are too high. I can't afford it. Or the, the market's uncertain. I don't think I should buy. But there may be some clients that say, hey, I do want to buy, but I want to see if the prices go lower, right? Which is a kind of a different objection. You got one person that doesn't want to buy or it's scared to buy. And then you got one person that says, yes, I do want to buy, but I think the market's going to go lower. And I want to, you know, wait and see if the prices go lower and, and take advantage of that opportunity. So anytime you have someone say that, I think it's important to peel that onion back and get into their mindset, right? So to answer an objection, you always got to follow the logic of the client, right? So if someone uh says hey yeah i think the market's going to go lower i want to wait just say hey yeah you're right it may go lower i totally understand why you would want to wait right you don't want to go you don't want to go into battle where you're like you know battling them on if it's going to go lower or not because that is going to lead to uh, confrontation and that's not going to inch you forward to the appointment right so you always want to follow their logic if they think the market's going to go lower okay well let's go down that rabbit hole together 
right? And this is what's going to make you a better salesperson, you know, by agreeing with them and trying to understand how did they got to that, uh, that decision or that thought or whatever it might be. So when someone says the market's going to go lower and I want to wait because I think I can get a lower price, I would say, hey, I don't blame you, right? The market goes lower and you can get the price at a lower, at a lower, uh, get the home at a lower price. Of course, I would do the same thing too. Um, and then I would follow that with a question, right? Hey, so how did you arrive at that, right? How did you arrive at that? Or what do you think, you know, the market's going to go to? How much do you think the prices are going to go lower? If you had to give it a percentage, you know, how much lower do you think the prices are going to go? And they may say 5%, 10%, 20%, 50%, whatever it might be. But now you're getting somewhere, right? Instead of just like, oh, okay, I'll call you back. It's like, no, well, let's, let's explore that, right? Let's explore that. Let's see what you think. So let's role play that real quick. Uh, who wants to role play that with me? Who wants to be the client? I'm going to role play this objection with you. I'll be the agent. Anybody? I'll be the client. Alessandra, okay. So you're going to give me the objection that, that you want to wait a little bit because you think the prices are going to go down and you know, you want to see maybe if you can get a better price by waiting. Right. Um, so go ahead, throw that objection at. Uh, Enrique, I just want to wait because um, I heard that the homes are going to go down next year. So I just want to wait and see. Okay. So you heard the homes are going to go down next year and you want to maybe wait and see if you can get like a lower price or, or what is it that you want to wait for? Yeah, um, I heard that the homes are going to drop next year. So that's what I want to do. Just wait and, and see. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Totally understand. Hey, Alessandra, like if the homes went down and they just went on sale, like I would probably wait too. Like why not get it at a lower price, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally understand. Like that's, that makes absolute sense. Um, let me ask you, um, so you do want to buy a home though? Um, in the future, yes, uh, when the prices go down. Got it, got it. And do you know like what price you would need to buy a home at for it to make sense? That's a great question. Um, I will say I don't have an idea, but whatever is a good deal. Got it. So you just want to make sure you get a good deal, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, and then how much lower do you think the prices are going to go? Like from today to next year, like, from whatever you heard or what have you heard? Uh, well, I hope they go down like back in 2008. Oh, okay. 2008 when the whole economy crashed. Um, yeah, yeah, that would- Or that similar would be at least. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, you have like a percentage or a dollar amount that you think like if a home's a million bucks right now, like do you have a percentage you think it would go down by next year or what do you think would be a good deal? Like how much of a discount would you have to get for it to be a good deal? Uh, probably like 200k 300k okay so that might be you know 20 30 percent lower right mm -hmm. on a million dollar home if you can get a home for 20 or 30 percent lower then that would be a good deal to you yes got it okay that makes sense i i, I deny it's important that i understand you know what you're looking for so i can see if i can help you or not um, what if a home went like, what if you got a home like a hundred thousand less than what it's worth or than the asking prices, would that still be a good deal? Yeah. If everything makes sense, why not? Okay. Okay. And the reason I'm asking is, is we are seeing that in some circumstances, right? We are coming across occasionally coming across uh, good deals like that, where we're seeing homes at a 10% or 20%, you know, that could be a hundred K 200 K discount from what they were selling at before. If I were to come across something like that, would you want me to, uh, would you want to miss out on that opportunity? No, of course not. Okay. Okay. So you would want me to send that to you and, and, and show you that property if I found something like that? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. So here's what I recommend, Alessandra, because you said you're not exactly sure what price you need to be at, right? Because I don't know, have you looked into like the finances or done like a consultation or know where you, what you qualify for? No, but I did one time I did the solo calculator and I have an idea more or less. Got it. Got it. Okay. So here's what I would recommend is what I recommend. 
so that we can find you one of those deals is because if I, if that deal came up right now, um, do you think a lot of people would try to jump on that one? Probably. Yeah, probably. Right. So that means we got to be prepared to move quick if I do get you that deal. So what I would recommend is this, I recommend we jump on a, a 15 minute, you know, zoom chat. I want to get my lender on there. And I also want to go over some of your criteria and see exactly what you're looking for. This way, number one, you know what you qualify for. And then number two, I know which deals to look out for and what areas and what types of properties. So when I do come across that one, then I can make sure I get that to you and we don't lose out on that opportunity. Does that, does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay, great. So I have some time uh, tomorrow. Does morning or afternoon work better for you? Mm, we can do it tomorrow. Afternoon. Oh, appointment set. Okay. So I want you guys to give me some feedback. What did you notice on that? You, who Raise your hand so, you, so I can get some feedback from you. And raise your hand and I'll call on you to unmute yourself. Josh, what did you notice about that? What stood out to you? Uh, what stood out to me is that you asked them what the price in their head would be for a good deal. And I thought that was like definitely putting all the pressure or putting it back on them that they, if they really can't answer that, then now you can like start putting in like your information and knowledge on them. Exactly. Right. Cause a good deal to Alessandra may be a different deal to Josh, which would be a different deal to Dewey. Right. Like Alessandra may just want like 50 K off and that's a good deal. Right. Like if I got a 50 K lower than the last property that sold, like that's a good deal. Josh may be thinking like, no, I need 200 K off from the last comp. Right. So if you don't know what's a good deal to them, then how do you even know what to talk about or what reference points to start at? Right. So that's where it goes back to following their logic, right? Following their logic. Okay. You want a good deal? Well, let's go down that rabbit hole. What do you think is a good deal? Right? What, what, uh, what sort of deal would get you excited enough to want to start looking at homes? you know, and I'm basically asking her for the answers. And then I'm using the answer back on her to book the appointment. You guys notice that? Like she gave me the info. I used it. Okay. If I could find you that, would you want to, would, and you notice how I said, would you want to miss out on the opportunity? Yeah. I didn't say, would you be interested in that? I gave her a takeaway. Would you want to miss out on that opportunity? I said that on purpose because there's a difference between would you be interested in this or would you want to lose out on this opportunity? Because no one wants to lose, right? Like, oh, shoot, it's a good deal. No, I don't want to lose out on that. So it's I asked her a question that would make her say yes, like, you know, you know, or agree with me. Right. What else did you guys notice? Who else can raise their hand? My like Tommy. Or go ahead, Alessandra, you're already on. I liked how you said um, that it was important. Um, I don't know, you made me feel like it's important for you to understand everything in order for you to help me or like, can I help you or not? So I, I wrote that down. I wrote that. Got it, right? So yeah, it's, hey, Alessandra, I totally understand. It, it would be important for us to sit down so I know exactly what you want. This way I can help you out the best, right? Now, did you hear me say, do you want to work with me? Did you hear me say, hey, if I found your deal, do you want to work with me? You know, would you be my client? Nothing like that. No, I always kept it around what she wanted. Hey, if I found you this opportunity, do you want to lose out on it? Right? Would that get you excited? Right? Is that something you would want me to send to you? Not, hey, would you want to work with me? Right? Because I know she's going to work with me if I get her to move forward. I don't need to ask that. I need to go back to what she needs and what she wants and what she wants a good deal, right? So I kept it all around the good deal. Um, Dewey, you raised your hand. What did you notice? Anything else? I noticed that you asked a question at the end of your sentence to keep them engaged with the, with you. And uh, I think that's something that I haven't done. I just like talk, talk, talk. So um, I, I really like that you did that. So asking a question basically like uh it's a tie down question right so a tie down question is when you say something and then you go back and you you ask them an agreement statement right that makes sense right dewey or that is what you want right or hey that would be interesting to you right right 
-hmm. because what I'm doing is, is I'm spitting out my information. And then at the end, I have to tie it down and put a bow on it by putting it back on them and saying, Hey, that does make sense. Right. I'm getting them to nod their head and say, yes, well, yeah, yeah, that does make sense. Right. Um, Miles, what did you notice, bro? You, you had raised your hand. Anything you noticed? I'll get to you next, Jomo. Same thing as Dewey. Same thing as Dewey. Same okay. Same. Uh, Jomo, anything? Um, what I noticed is that the the whole entire conversation and the questions you asked, it shows if this lead is realistic or serious or not. That's what I got from it. Because if she was answering the questions in a, like a nonchalant way, you would have known or picked up as an agent that, hey, maybe this lead is not really interested or she, she's not serious. Would you would have noticed that? If you're yeah. um, speaking with a live client? Yeah, and that's why, that's why when you ask more questions and you get them to start talking, then you're, you're qualifying them in the process, right? So, hey, what areas, what do you think would be a good deal? What dollar amount would make sense for you, right? Because then I'm calling her bluff. Like, all right, you want a good deal? Cool, let's see if we can get you a good deal. How much of a good deal? What dollar amount, right? What area? Because then I'll quickly know, like, it's like, all right, this is what you asked for. Let me give it to you. But I need to know, I need to know these questions, right? Um, and that immediately is going to validate or invalidate what someone's saying. A good observation. What you know? What you guys notice about my tone or my delivery? Anybody raise your hand? Casual. Alessandra. Casual, um, you know what you're like, just like if you're talking to, like, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Got it. Like not nervous, like just conversation. So there's some confidence. There's some conversation, casual, natural. Josh, you got some? I just think that it just went smooth, like a conversation, like the whole time. And then the whole thing of you not asking like to about work with you or like in leaving it pretty much like the ball in their court until they passed it back to you at the end wasn't like a very like salesy. It was just like a normal conversation. Yep. Exactly. Because do people like to get sold? No, right? No one wants to feel like they're being sold. They want to feel like they're being guided. They want to feel like they're making the decision, right? Not like you made them make the decision. So a good way to do that is to give them the information and then ask them if they agree with you, right? So like, that makes sense, right? So questions like that makes sense or uh, that would that be beneficial to you, right? Or do you see what I mean by that? So asking some those questions at the end puts the control back in their side so they can say yes or no, right? And now they feel like they're in control and that's how you move them forward. Um, so it, it's, these are small things guys, but these are things that if you pick up on these little small things, it's going to make your calls a lot more effective to where they sound like just casual conversations and they don't sound like a straight sales call because nobody wants to be sold. Uh, what was that saying, Thomas, that you had people don't like to be sold. They like to be what? No one likes to be sold, but everyone likes to buy. Everyone likes to buy. There you go. I was looking for that, right? No one likes to be sold, but everyone likes to buy, right? You know, and did you hear me ask Alessandra? I clarified. So you do want to buy a house though, right? So that was an important question because when I, when she said, yeah, I do want to buy a house eventually. I just want to wait till the prices are right. I want to get a good deal. I was able to get to the root of the problem, right? Instead of just pitching her and pitching her and pitching her, and I never even clarify, okay, so you do want to buy a house. Okay, so you do, you do want to buy a house. That's another agree. You know, it's another statement where she's agreeing. So if you can get people to agree with you throughout the conversation multiple times by saying, by asking questions that they'll say yes to, like you do want to buy a house, correct? Or that makes sense, right? Each time they say yes, you're slowly inching them to the finish line, right? And you got to usually get them to agree with you a few times um, before they say, okay, let's move forward for the appointment. The final part of it, guys, if you guys pick up on this, how did I close it? How, what was the close? So I said all that stuff. I went through the dialogue and how did I close them for the appointment? What was the statement that I made? Who, who remembers that? It was the recommendation statement.
What remember that? Harold. So it's, um, what I recommend is let's meet up with a lender uh, for just 15 minutes. That way, you know, that way we are prepared. That way we don't miss out on these deals. Was yeah. that the one that you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So I want you guys to emphasize, here's what I recommend, right? Because you can go, what I recommend is we meet with the lender. Like Harold said it kind of fast right now, right? And he's just repeating it back to me. What I recommend is we meet with the lender. We go shop for home, right? But to make it like hit better, right? To give it more emphasis, here's what I recommend. And now I got a little more serious, right? A little more serious. And I had a pause right there. That little nuance right there is going to get them listening. Okay, shit. He's about to recommend something. I got to listen. But when you just kind of brush over it, well, here's what I recommend is jump on a call. We do this, blah, blah, blah. Then it didn't, it didn't make it so much so dramatic where it didn't have that effect, right? Like they could miss that. And that could be a little difference maker between them saying, okay, this is important or this is not important. Because anytime you're going to say something important, you're usually going to put a little more emphasis on something, right? So when you're going in for that close of trying to book the appointment, you want to make sure like, here's what I recommend comes with like authority and it comes with a little more calm and a little more serious tone so that they know like, all right, this is where, this is, this is important right here. Listen up, right? Um, so let's role play that right there. Let's role play that part. The what I recommend part. Harold, let's do it again. Um, so say the same, same thing you told me right now, but I want you to emphasize that recommend part. Yeah. So Enrique, here's what I recommend. Let's have a meeting with just one of my lenders. It'll be 15 minutes. And that way we'll be more prepared. That way, whenever we do find a deal, we'll be able to jump on it immediately. And that's what you want, right? Yep, that's what I want. Awesome, perfect. that was perfect. Perfect right there. A little more serious tone. He paused, that set me up to listen. And then he gave me the recommendation. And then you see how he tied it down at the end. He goes, that is what you want, right? That was genius right there. That last little, that is what you want. It wasn't like, would you be interested in that? It's like, no, I'm saying what you want and that is what you want, right? That's a lot different than saying, would you be interested? By saying that is what you want. That got me like to tie down. Like I was handcuffed right there. I couldn't go nowhere else because that is what I want, right? Uh, good job, Harold. Let's get someone else. Role play just that part. The, here's what I recommend. Put some emphasis on that recommend. And then at the end, tie it down with, you know, that is what you want, right? Let's go. Raise your hand. Who wants to go? All right, I'm going to call on somebody. Let's go, uh, Vivian. Can you? Okay. Um, where do I start again? So we're doing, we're doing the, the, closing. the closing. Here's what I recommend. You know, let's jump on a call. You're basically telling them you want to book the appointment. Um, just jump on a call. Let's figure out your options. This way you're ready, you know, when that opportunity does come up, because we are getting those opportunities and I want you to be ready to move on it. Um, and then you want to tie it down with, you know, that is what you want, right? Yeah. So the recommend part, here's what I recommend. It needs to be a little dramatic. Like you need to speak up a little bit, a little more tone, put a brief pause there so that it's important. All right, let's go. Hey, Enrique, here's what I recommend. I recommend we jump on a Zoom call and go over all the criteria that you're looking into and make sure that this is the right time to buy for you. That is what you want, right? Yep, that's what I want. That's what I want. Good job, Vivian. Um, Vivian, my critique for you is naturally you're a quiet girl, right? We all know that, like naturally you're quiet. So when you're on these calls, you're gonna have to turn up your voice a little bit right? Because you naturally are, are soft-spoken, right? And there's some people that speak too loud that got to like bring it down a little bit because they're just naturally loud, right? For you, it's the opposite, right? Because remember, when you're on a phone call, that's the only thing they can see or hear. They don't see body language, anything like that. It's strictly off of your voice. So being able to project your voice a little bit and, and turn up the energy or the volume is, I think, is going to make, is going to take your calls a lot further. Um, all right, let's go with someone who isn't soft-spoken. Who's loud on this call? Who's naturally loud? Kimmy, what's up, Kimmy? 
what's uh what's cracking uh it means a little louder right naturally so kimmy <laughs> has to balance that out uh kimmy let's go give me the here's what i recommend and then close me with the that is what you want okay hey enrique this is what i for a minute oh sorry hey enrique this is what i recommend we meet with our on my lender we go over the numbers and see if it makes sense because that's what you want right that is what i want okay kimmy um the here's what i recommend Say it a little slower. Okay. And like, here's what I recommend. Do a little pause right there, a one second pause, right? Okay. Go. This is what I recommend. We meet with my lender, go over some numbers, see if it makes sense, and we can get you started. Is that, that's what you want, right? That's what I want. Yep. Good job, Kimmy. All right, let's go. Who's next? We're doing the close and the tie down. Andre, same way Kimmy said it. All right, uh, Enrique, here's what I recommend. Uh, we take the time, uh, or I, you wouldn't want to miss out. On, uh, uh, let me go again. Uh, here's what I recommend. Uh, we hey, sit down. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Remember that here's what I recommend when you, it's a setup, right? It's almost like you're gonna, uh, has anybody ever got a baseball and threw it up in the air and hit the ball, right? Like mm -hmm. you're setting that up, right? So that first setup needs to be really strategic, right? Here's what I recommend, pause. Because you, if you talk too fast, it's not gonna have the same dramatic effect, right? So you gotta naturally slow it down because Andre, you naturally talk fast. So you gotta slow down. Here's what I recommend. All right. Here's what I recommend. We have a lender, we can sit down, we can discuss the details necessary. And uh, you know, you wouldn't want to miss out an opportunity, uh, would you? No, I wouldn't. Okay, uh, Andre, one more time. Here's what I recommend and then I'm gonna clap. So that's the pause right there. That's right. a one second pause. Here's what I recommend. And then let it soak in. Pause. Got it. Now, now I'm listening because I'm like, oh shit, what's he about to recommend, right? All right, go Andre. All right, here's what I recommend. We sit down with a lender, they'll discuss the details. And from there, uh, we could uh, figure out if this is the right time for you to buy. How's that sound? Sounds great. So the, the tie down, great pause in the beginning, right? The clap, did that help? Mm -hmm. Just a visual right there. But the tie down is- That's what you want, right? Yeah. That is what you want, right? That yeah. is what you want, right? Because, and you gotta go back to what the motivation was. The motivation was to find a good deal. So you always got to throw in the motivation at the end. So here's what I recommend. Pause. I recommend we get on a call. We're going to talk to my lender. I'm going to go over your exact criteria. This way, when I get one of those deals that's discounted 10%, 20%, you're ready to move forward on that. That is what you want, right? Mm -hmm. So here's what I recommend. Pause. I told them what we're going to do. And then I put their motivation back in there to find you one of those deals and be ready for that deal when you get it. Because remember, in the beginning, she wants to get a good deal. So we want to put the motivation back. That's her motivation. And then that is what you want, right? This is the Jedi shit, guys. This is, this is how you become a Jedi salesperson. So, all right, try that one more time, Andre. All right. Enrique, here's what I recommend. Pause. If I find one of those 10%, 20% discounted properties, uh, you want to be ready, and I think we should sit down with the lender and discover it's right for you. Um, that's what you would want, right? Were you guys sure? I wasn't sure. Yeah, like, <laughs> wasn't sure like, that is what you want, know, right? Like, yeah, no, no, for real. I don't know. Like, so look at so let me point this out, right? This is a small detail. When you say that is what you want, right? There's different ways. If I go, that is what you want, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, then I'm like, well, I don't know. Do uh, that? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But then when you go, that is what you want, right? You see the difference? It's just the tonality. The tonality is different, right? <clears throat> How your voice swings up or down can pose a question or compose like a statement, right? That is what you want, right? That's saying like a statement. Like, I know for sure this is what you want. When I go, that is what you want, right? And then my voice goes like higher pitch at the end. That means I'm like, not sure, right? So you gotta drive it home, bro, by, by totally in that voice. Let's try one more time. Enrique, what, uh, 
what I would recommend is that we sit down with a lender, discuss what available options for you to get the like, best home at the best price. Um, that is what you want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. A lot better, bro. Let's give it up for Andre. That little subtle change, bro, and this is just the way you said that that is what you want, right? Confidently, it like it gave me the confidence to agree with you, right? So if you don't sound confident, they're not going to be confident. All right, let's put someone else to the test. Uh, who else wants to go? Maggie, Tyler, Iris, Connie, Lisa, any of you guys available? You guys all have your cameras off. Tyler, are you ready, bro? Yeah, what's up? Let's do it. All right. Hey, Enrique. This is what I recommend. Let's get on a call. I'll have a lender on there. We'll break down what you can afford. And then when I do find that discount home you're looking for, we're ready to move. That is what you want, right? Perfect, dog. On the money, bro. Let's go. My boy Tyler's a beast on the phones, if you don't know. Pay attention. All right. Uh, good job. Dewey. Hi, Enrique. Um, here's what I recommend uh, for us to sit down 15 to 30 minutes uh, just to see what uh, to sit down with a lender just to see what you qualify for. And we also check what type of home you're uh, searching for. So uh, would, would it, that, that is what you want, right? All right. We're going to try that one more time, bro, because <laughs> The, the ums, the hey, don't say hey, Enrique, just go straight for it. Here's what I recommend, right? We already assume we're in the conversation, right? So we don't want to say hey, Enrique. We're not starting a new conversation. This is at the end when you're going for that close. So here's what I recommend. Pause. Let's jump on a call. Let me get my lender on there. Let me, let's go over your exact criteria so I know what you're looking for. This way, when I do find that home for you, that 10 to 20% discount at home, you're ready to move forward because they're, those are going to be really hot. That is what you want, right? All right, go, Dewey. Here's what I recommend for us to sit down and jump on a call with our lender to see what you're qualified for. And also, I can uh, help you look for a home that's discounted 10 to 20%. Uh, that is what you want, right? Awesome, man. A lot better, bro. Good job, dude. Thank you. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go. Who else? Miles, let's go. Remember energy. So Miles, remember from our last critique, our last call, when you when you have energy, bro, you're you're you sound a lot better, right? So I need you to shake it off. I need you to sit up. This is a cue, right? This is a, a physical cue. And I need you to make sure you have that energy. And don't worry about anybody else listening to you. Just speak how you would be speaking to someone at a barbecue or something. <laughs> hey Enrique, here's what I what I recommend we do. I recommend we jump on a Zoom call with uh, one of our lenders. That way we can determine where you're at and if you're ready. And uh, once we find that home that's 10 to 20% off, um, we can go ahead and jump on that. That is what you want, right? That's what I want. All right. Good job, bro. Good job. Uh, all right. Let's go around the room, guys. I want to make sure everyone gets this one. Teddy. Hey, Enrique. This is what I recommend. Let's meet with my lender so we can get you prepared for that good deal is that what you want okay let's change the wording that was good delivery but let's change the wording um remember you're not when you're asking is that what i want you're not really wanting me to say give you like an answer you're wanting me to agree with you so you're saying that is what you want right oh. right versus hey is that what you want and then you're waiting for me to tell you yes or no it's more like it's an, it's an agreement question, right? It's a question technically because it has a question mark at the end, but it's really a statement. Like you just reiterating, that's what you want, right? So here's what I recommend. Pause. Let's jump on a call. I'm going to get my lender on there. We're going to see exactly what you qualify for so you know where you stand. And then I want to know your exact criteria. So when one of those deals comes, those 10 to 20% off, we can jump on that. That is what you want, right? All right, let's try it again, Teddy. Hey, Enrique, this is what I recommend. Let's meet up with our lender to see where you qualify. So when we do find a good deal, we're ready to jump. That is what you want, right? Perfect. Yeah, that's what I want. Good job, Teddy. Let's go.
All right, who else? Brenda, Lisa, who unmuted? I'll go. Let's go, Lisa. Got her baby in hand. She's don't matter. She's closing deals. Let's go. Here's what I recommend. We get on a call with my lender. We go over um, all your exact criteria. So that way, when that deal does present itself, we're ready to jump on it. That is what you want, right? Money right there. Let's go. <laughs> all right, Brenda. Let's go, Brenda. Okay. Um, what I recommend is that we jump on a call with the lender. That way we are prepared. Um, so when we find a good deal, we're ready to move forward. That is what you want, right? That's what I want, Brenda. Um, so Brenda, your, yeah. your delivery is very like happy go lucky, right? Like to me, like you're like, there's a, like, I could tell like you're smiling while you're doing it, but you got to, when you're going to go in for the kill, you got to like turn that little serious side on. Right. So mm. here's what I, here's what I recommend. And you want to, you want your voice to drop a little bit. Right. Huh. Not like, here's what I recommend. It's like, here's what I recommend <laughs> because there's a difference, right? There's a difference because it creates like a sense of like authority and gets you to listen. Right. Yeah. And it, it makes it serious. And when someone's about to say something serious, then the other person listens. Right. So it's a, it's a psychology uh, thing. So mm -hmm. here's what I recommend. Yeah. Um, and I want you to be more serious about this because you could be happy go lucky during the whole call. <laughs> but then at the end where you're going in for that close, you got to now be a little more serious, right? Like now the, the salesperson comes in the room. All right, try it again. Okay. Enrique, this is what I recommend. Uh, let's jump on a call with our lender. That way you are fully prepared. And when we find a good deal, we're able to move forward with that. That is what you want, right? Money, let's go. <laughs> you. Did you notice the difference, Brenda, in that? Yeah, it's not my natural state. I'm more like, you know, happy go lucky is like more, more my natural state. Um, but yeah, it's, I do see what you're saying. It's more effective, like sales wise. Yeah, and here's the thing guys, is there's some people, <laughs> Let me meet Josh. Uh, there's some people that are just happy go lucky all the time. And then what happens is you end up in the friend zone, right? That happens, <laughs> that happens with dating as well, right? Like at some point you gotta go in for the clothes. <laughs> it's true, right? Because if they don't see you as an authority or as a leader, then they'll like you because you're cool. But if they don't see that you have that shark ability to you, they're not going to be a hundred percent confident in you helping them get that $2 million home, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So you want to have that right balance of nurture, caring, happy and stuff, but then be able to turn on the shark in sales mode at the necessary times. Yeah. Right. Bring out my ninja skills. Bring out your ninja skills. So for <laughs> you, Brenda, since naturally, like you're always bubbly, that's great. Right. That makes you great. And you're going to attract a lot of clients that way. Mm -hmm. But then also show them that you got your shark side to you, right? Yeah. When it's, when it's time. At those little times when you're going in for the close or when you're trying to, to push someone forward to sign the document or when you're trying mm -hmm. to get them to up their price or whatever it might be, that's yeah. when the shark needs to come out and the leader needs to come in, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, awesome, awesome. All yeah. right, who wants to go? This is it, guys. This is the it's it's the monotony, right? But this is the practice that you need because you're gonna deal with this on every call. My, let's go, my. Enrique, this is what I recommend. I recommend we meet with the lender over Zoom to go over your options so we don't miss out on these opportunities when I meet when I find them. That is what you want, right? That's what I want. So, my, you said everything correct, but now I want you to. I want you to do the same thing that Brenda did, right? Very nice, very bubbly, very presentable, like super cool personality. But now I want the shark to come out, right? The my, like the closer, right? Here's what I recommend. And I, you need to get a little more serious when you say it. And then slow down a little bit because when you slow down, it has more of a dramatic effect, right? So let's try one more time. Enrique, this is what I recommend. I recommend we meet with a lender over Zoom so we can go over your options so that you don't miss any other, any of the opportunities that I find. This is what you want, right? I'm stumbling a little bit. One more time. <laughs> okay, one more time. Um, and take it step by step. Here's what I recommend. 
pause. So let's start there. Just say, here's what I recommend. Here's what I recommend. Enrique, this is what I recommend. I recommend uh, you meet with a lender over slow, Zoom. As slow as I, here's what I recommend. Slower? Yeah. Okay. Enrique, this is what I recommend. I recommend we meet with a lender over Zoom to go over your options so that you don't miss out on any opportunities that I find. That is what you want, right? That's what I want. Um, my, you got to be specific too. When you're bringing up the, when you're bringing up the motivation again, don't just generalize it by saying any opportunities. Go like say what her words were, like the ten to twenty percent discounted properties that you mentioned. We don't want to miss out on those. That is what you want, right? Because when you re when you use Alessandra's words, right? That was she was the initial client. When you use those words back to her, then it clicks in her mind by just saying hot opportunity. That could mean a bunch of different things, right? So try one more time, my. Here's what I recommend. Pause. Let's jump on a call. I want you to see how much I'm pausing. Let's jump on a call. Pause. Let me get my lender on the line. We're going to go over your finances so you know where you stand. I'm going to go over your exact criteria so I can find you one of those 10 to 20% discounted properties. That is what you want, right? All right, Mai, let's try that. Okay. Enrique, this is what I recommend. I recommend we meet over Zoom with a lender to go over your numbers and see where you stand financially. And when I find a when I find a property that is ten to twenty percent, just sorry. <laughs> Shake it off. It's all good. Shake it off. Try one more time. Okay, Enrique, this is what I recommend. I recommend we meet with the lender over Zoom to go over your numbers to see where you stand financially so that when I find a property that is 10 to 20% discounted, um, you won't miss out on that opportunity. That is what you want, right? That's what I want. Awesome. Way better, my way better. Um, and I know that might not be natural for you, Mai, because naturally, like you're used to speaking the way you speak. But here's the thing. The reason we're on these calls right now is because we're trying to get better at our scripts. And better isn't necessarily saying a different thing. It's more how you say it and how you deliver it, right? Tonality, speed, pauses in between, stuff like that. That's what makes you the salesperson. And if you notice, when I, when I present to you guys, and when I host trainings, I use a lot of sales technique in how I speak to you guys. From like certain words that I say, pausing, getting serious, emphasizing certain things, snapping, right? Like those are all things to like drive the point home so that I capture your attention, right? So it's something that these little things turn you into a shark salesperson. All right, uh, Connie, let's go, Connie. Hi, Enrique. So what I'd recommend is that we hop on a call with my lender so that way we can, you know, not miss out on any good deals. You know, we're really looking for some discounted homes and really in the end, that's what you're looking for, right? A great deal. That's what I'm looking for, Connie. Uh, now I want you to say that back to me and like sound like a shark though. Like, here's what I reckon, like get serious on me, get serious. That's what I mean. Hey, Enrique, here's what I'd recommend. Let's hop on a call with my lender and we'll sit down and we'll check out some numbers, check out some discounted homes and we'll get you a great deal. That's what you're looking for, right? That's what I'm looking for. Awesome. Good stuff, Connie. Uh, Maggie, you want to shoot, shoot your shot on this? Sure. Okay. Hi, Enrique. So here's what I recommend. We would sit down with one of my lenders and explore your options and just so that we can be prepared. So when I find a home that is 10 to percent discounted, we can make um, um, our moves on that. Um, is, that is what you want, right? That's what I want. Okay. Uh, one more time, Maggie. I want you to get a little more serious with me. Don't say, don't say, hey, Enrique, right? Because that softens it up. Like just go into, here's what I recommend, right? Okay. Like, I want the shark to come out, right? Here's what I recommend. Okay. Wait, so I don't say hi. Don't say hi, right? <laughs> Remember, we've already been talking this whole time on the phone. Okay, right, this, right. This is yeah. the last part of the conversation where you're going for the appointment, right? Okay. So here's what I recommend, Enrique, that we sit down with one of my lenders and go over your options and 
um, to, to prepare, sorry. Okay. Start all over, start all over, shake it off. So here's what I would recommend, Enrique, that we sit down with one of my lenders to go over your options and uh, be prepared. So when I find a property that is 10 to 20% discounted, um, then we can make a move because that's what you want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. Awesome. Great adjustment. Let's go. Let's go. Um, it takes a little practice, guys, right? Because we always want to go back to how we normally talk, right? So it's it takes a little practice to adjust your tone, adjust your voice, right? Get a little more serious, lean in to the client, right? Even when you're on the phone, like feel yourself leaning in, right? Here's what I recommend. Let's get on a call. It's me with my lender. Let's see exactly even when I say words, let's see exactly what you qualify for so you know where you stand. And let's go over all your criteria, all your criteria, right? I'm emphasizing those words so that when I find that home that's 10 to 20% discounted, we can jump on that fast. That is what you want, right? So you got to emphasize certain words, right? Because you want to drive those words home, right? Like if you were going to call someone, if you were going to call someone a bitch, <laughs> let's just, let me just use this example, right? What I just said, by me saying the word bitch, FYI, that's a sales skill. It's called a pattern interrupt. Because if I say a bad word, you guys all of a sudden start listening. So that's a sales tactic, just FYI. Um, if you were to call someone a bitch, you wouldn't go, hey, you're a bitch. You would say, you're a bitch, right? Like you see how different that is? Because you want to drive that home. You want to make sure like they feel that, right? Because it's going to give you a lot. It's going to make it a lot more effective, right? Now, don't call anyone a bitch. Don't do that. I'm trying to make a point here, right? When you emphasize certain words or when you're going to call someone a bad word, you're going to make sure it stings, right? Because you want to get that dramatic effect. Same thing. Let's go over all your options. Let's see exactly where you stand. Let's make sure we can find you the right home. So when I find that 10 to 20% discounted property, you're ready to jump. That is what you want, right? All right. Was that a good example or not? <laughs> We're having fun, guys. Please don't take no offense. We use bad words to drive a point home and make sure you understand the sales tactic. Um, Iris, Chung, you ready? Someone say, go, Iris. Yes. All right, let's go, Iris. Hey, Enrique, here's what I recommend. Let's sit down and go over the number with one of my lender. So once we find the 10, 15% discount opportunities, we won't miss out on that. And that is what you ultimately want, right? That's what I want. There you go, Iris, let's go. Um, all right, who else didn't go? There's someone that's hiding that didn't go. Who else? Call them out. I'll go. Let's go, Jessica. Don't call me a bitch. <laughs> Oh, no I'm promise. Scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Enrique, I recommend that we hop on a call with my lender to go over our buying power so we are prepared for that 10 to 20% discount deal. That is what you want, right? That's what I want. Awesome. Good job, Jessica. She didn't say it exactly like I said it, right? Like, but it drove it drove the point home. It, like, remember, it doesn't have to be word for word, but the recommend part. We jump on the call and then the close. That is what you want, right? And her tonality was great. Good job, Jessica. Um, who else would like to go? Jomo, you want to go? Enrique, here's what I recommend. Let's jump on a Zoom call with my lender because when that 10 to 20% discount comes up for, for the home that you're looking for, we want to act as quick as possible, right? That's what you want, right? That's what I want. Good job, Jomo. Let's go. All right. Tony, do you want to go? Sure. Let's go, Tony. Here's what I recommend. Let's have a meeting at one of my lenders, go over the numbers, figure out what your options are, and make sure that you're fully prepared when we find you that deal. That is what you want, right? That's what I want. Good job, Tony. Uh, who else did you go? Josh, you good, bro? I know you're a cop, bro. You want to try it or no? Yeah, I'll try it. Right, Just forgive my, my voice. <clears throat> Zip. Hey, Rike, um, here's what I recommend. I recommend that we jump on a quick 
Zoom with my lender to go over your options when you're buying power, to go over your criteria so that when we find that discount at home and that good deal that you're looking for, um, we can move forward. That is what you that is what you want, right? That's what I want. All right, Josh, good job, bro. I know you're a little, a little under the weather, bro, but you got it, dude. Uh, anybody else that didn't go? Thomas, let's go, Thomas. We got a couple more minutes. Let's hear from a veteran closer. So here's what I recommend, Enrique. Let's jump on a quick call with my lender, and that way we could go over your numbers. And when that opportunity comes available, that 10 to 20% off home, we'll be ready to make a move. And that's what you're looking for, right? That's what I'm looking for. Awesome, bro. And I hear Thomas use this all the time. Honestly, Thomas, when I, I hear him on his calls, he does a lot of these closes and tie downs naturally. Uh, Thomas, is that natural, bro? Or were you, have you trained on this? Or Because I hear you do like a similar thing a lot of times. It is not natural at all. It's something you learn by failing. Uh, and when you do it, you just got to be really direct. You just, you, you got to like slide down with it. It's like, and that's what you're looking for, right? Like a little condescending. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. And, and yeah, he's really good on this calls guys. He, he come, I like Thomas's style because it's always coming from a place of like a authority or like an advisor. It's always like high level advice when he's talking to clients, here's what I recommend. Right. And that gets people listening and gets people moving forward. Right. And there's no wonder why, why Thomas uh, helps a lot of clients out. Um, anybody else that didn't go? Is there anybody else? No, I think that was everyone. Um, Real quick, guys, uh, in the chat, actually in the, uh, in the Slack channel, let's take a quick minute right now and then we'll wrap up. We got five minutes left, so let's just do this and then we'll, we'll hang up. In the Slack channel, um, please re reply to my post. What was your biggest takeaway or immediate thing that you need to adjust? to your style to get this, this down better. Uh, so let me post real quick. All right, just posted it, just hit reply to it and post it in Slack what your biggest takeaway was. Let's get everyone to put it in there, guys. Got 20 people on this, including me. So 19, 19 responses. Speak with authority. Yes, sir. Keep practicing. Role play, role play, role play. Take charge with the closing statement. My tonality and pace of speaking. Tone, speaking with authority and slowing down. Slow down when you want to drive points home. Clarify their goal. Peel back their motivation. Awesome. Speak with authority. Use their motivation as an anchor to tie down and close. Yep. I need to work on cadence, volume, and tonality through my conversations to lead my client to the close. Be a shark, Connie. Speak with authority. Be confident when speaking, following the client's logic. There you go, Jomo. Speaking with authority and pace yourself. That's a big one. Follow their logic, right? They say something, great. Let me understand why you think that way, how you got to that decision. Speak with authority, more emphasis. Don't be in the friend zone. There you go, Harold. That's a good one, right? Remember, clients want to be led, right? They want to be led. They want, they want a leader as their agent to get them to the finish line, which requires you to step up and be confident and speak with authority. That doesn't mean you need to know everything, but when you are speaking, make sure you speak with authority. If you don't know something, then you go ask for help then you go bring them the right answer, right? But yeah, otherwise you end up in the friend zone, right? Where they think you're just, yeah, you're nice. She's a cool agent. He's cool. Yeah, he's nice. But I don't know if that's the person that I would use to buy my $3 million house, right? 
Confidence is really, really key to success and speaking confidently is key. Um, guys, and what I want you to take away is this level of tie down and close, you use this on any objection, right? Everything we teach you here is the framework for how you work through any objection, right? Anything that they say, we're gonna go through the same process and at the end, we're gonna use that motivation back on them to go for the tie down, right? So it could be, it could be like, instead of wanting to find a good deal, it could be that they want to, they want to do this fast, right? Like they want to hurry up and buy before the end of the year. They want to move quickly. That's their motivation. So then you can use that motivation in the close to say, Hey, this is why we need to meet this way. We can get you in there quickly before Christmas. Right? So you see how you can substitute their motivation in that closing statement to get them to move forward. All right, guys, thanks so much for showing up today. Hope you got some nuggets out of this. Let me know if you need anything. See you soon. Let's go out there, guys. Be a shark. Peace.